was just reviewing the story for you. Let me tell you the story of Prostam and Sohrab. Prostam was the greatest warrior in all of Iran. He was so strong that only one horse could carry him. The horse's name was Rakhsh. Rakhsh was the strongest horse in all of Iran. The only horse that could carry Rostam was Rakhsh. And the only person that Rakhsh accepted as his rider was Rostam. They were a team. One day, Rostam decided that he would go hunting near the kingdom of Turan. He set out, and after, feast, and after feasting on his kebab, he had a siesta. While he slept and Rakhsh was in pasture, seven knights came along, saw Rakhsh, and decided Rakhsh would make an amazing steed for their kingdom. They tried to kidnap Rakhsh. In the attack, Rakhsh killed two of the knights but the other five managed to capture him. When Rostam woke up, he found Rakhsh gone, and he followed the hoof prince to a, king, to a city in Turan. As he walked up, the alarm was sounded. The guards told the king, the great Rostam is arriving at our castle on foot. The king came out and met Rostam. Rostam told the king, I think one of your knights stole my horse. The king quickly said, No, 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 no. This, this has to be a mistake. There is no way one of my people would steal your horse. I will find your horse. In fact, you stay. You come with me. You stay in my mansion while I search for your horse. This will be resolved. It's all a mistake. Prostam rested in the palace. While he slept, Princess Tatmine, daughter of the king, snuck up and woke up Rostam. She said, we should be married. You're really strong. And I'm really strong. I'm born from the race of leopards and lions. And I have a wonderful bloodline. If we have a child, he's going to be more powerful than you are, or more beautiful and intelligent than I am. Rostam accepted the, or Rostam saw this was a good idea. And the next day, they told the king they would be wed. While the king searched for Rakhsh, they spent much time together. But finally, Rakhsh was found. Before Rostam left, he gave Tahmina a jewel, and he said, If we have a son, put this jewel around his wrist, and he will be as strong as a warrior as I am. If we have a daughter, put the jewel around her neck, and she will be as beautiful as you are. Then he set out and left Turan, never to return. Soon, Tahmina had a son. She named him Sohrab. As he grew up, he became as strong as Rostam. That, then one day he asked his mother of his father, and she said, Your father is the great Rostam. Sohrab decided that he would now find his father and conquer both Iran and Turan, and make his father the king and his mother the queen. He began to build an army. During this, Afro Siam, the Shah of Turan, gave Sohrab his army and told, his and told the leaders of the army, don't tell Sohrab who Rostam is. I want him to conquer the country and I want it, and I want it to be conquered in my name. Then, Sohrab found himself a horse. Sohrab left for the country of Iran with, with Afrosiab's army and Zinde, his uncle, who knew Rostam's face. They destroyed and burned all the, all the borderline villages that they found. And soon they came to the White Castle. The Pahlavan of this castle, names was Gustam. He was extremely old and all he could do was give military advice. However, he had a daughter, Gorda Farid, 
She had trained with her father and was a great soldier. Because Gustam could not go and ask Sohrab's army what they were doing, because he was elderly, and Gorda Farid could not go, because she was a woman, Hajar went out and asked the army. Hojar and Sohrab quickly got into a fight, and Sohrab challenged Hojar to a wrestle. When they fought, Hojar was quickly pinned, tied up, and taken hostage or and taken prisoner. The people of the White Castle saw this, and Gorda Farid, filled with rage over this, took action. She dressed up in a suit of armor and came out. She challenged the Turanian army. Sohrab accepted. Quickly, Gorda Farid rained arrows on Sohrab. All Sohrab could do to defend himself was lift his shield behind his head and charge her. As he got closer, Gorda Farid quickly pulled out her lance and nearly knocked Sohrab off his, off her, off his horse. Sohrab quickly pulled up, quickly ran up to her, filled with rage, knocked her off her horse, pulled out his lance and attempted to run her through. On the ground, Gorda Farid pulled out her sword, deflected the lance, jumped back on, on, his ho on her horse, and ran away with her winnings. Sarab looked at her for a minute, puzzled. The battle was not over. He still could defeat her. He ran up, t he ra rode up to her, knocked her off her horse, ripped off her helmet, and discovered he was just bested by a woman. When again he found his voice, he said, I will take you prisoner, and you, and you will be the most beautiful prisoner I've ever had. She laughed at him and said, you're going to insult your entire army by bringing me back and showing you were beat up by a woman? Sohrab thought for a minute and realized, if the women of Iran fight like she and run to the battlefield, it's no wonder no one has conquered this country. Then she quickly said, I have a proposition. You take me back to my castle. I give you the castle, and you give me my freedom. They walked up to the castle. Gustam opened the door, opened the portal. Gorda Fari walked in the portal and quickly slammed it behind him. Sohrab stood outside the portal for a minute, puzzled at what had just happened. Then Gorda Fari ran up the stairs, and above she yelled down at Sohrab, if you two Iranian raiders can't even defeat me, there's no way you'll take down Rostam and the Iranian army. Go home before you insult yourself farther. Sohrab, filled with rage, knew there was nothing he could do. He turned around and walked back to his army. He knew that tomorrow he would invade the castle and it would be his. Later that day, Gustam wrote a letter to King Kekavus asking for assistance with his army so that he could defeat the Turanian invaders. Then, in the night, while everyone else slept, the Iranian army left the castle and, and gave it to the Turanians. The next day, Sohrab's army charged the castle, only to find the doors open and everyone gone. At that time, the letter had or Kekavus had received the letter. He then wrote another letter to Rostam saying, Come to the White Castle immediately. Drop whatever it is you're doing and come here. We need you to fight with our army to defeat the Turanians. Rostam did not want to leave this day, and with his political power he didn't have to, so he rested for four days, and finally left on left after that. When he arrived in